Well, hello everyone. Thank you for coming. So um, we're going to go over um, how cool accessibilities, how cool accessibility tools can make your life easier. And hopefully I can get through this okay. So um, let's see here. My name is Kat Shaw. Um, as I was mentioning, um, this is just a picture of me at my on my honeymoon near Neuschwanstein Castle in Germany, in Bavaria, Germany. Uh, so my name is Kat Shaw, I'm a senior front-end developer at Lullabot, and I'm also an accessibility advocate. Um, you'll notice Ali is there, so that is a short name for accessibility with uh, 11 in the middle. L11 is the number of letters between A and Y in accessibility, so I'm going to use Ali a lot during this just to shorten it so I'm not tumbling over my words uh, quite a bit. You can find me at, um, at Kat and Shaw on Twitter and LinkedIn. So, Okay, so so why are we here? Uh, we're here to learn about some cool Alley tools that will assist you with identifying and fixing Alley tools on a daily basis with the end goal of making the web accessible to all. According to the U.S. Census Bureau um, Disability Statistics Report in 2015, it's estimated that Americans with a disability numbered 39,906,328. So with a total population of 316,450,569 people, that's 12.6% of, of our population. According to the World Bank, um, in their disability inclusion report in 2019, 15% of the world's population, or 1 billion people, experience some form of disability. And um, when you say disability, you, got, you also got to remember temporary disabilities, which all of us experience at some point, maybe a broken arm, uh, maybe you hurt your neck, whatever. Uh, if you can imagine if you have a cast, a full arm cast, and how hard that would be to do our jobs on a daily basis, typing on our computer. Long slide. There we go. <laughs> so what we will cover. Um, we're going to cover um, five basic things uh, quickly, as quickly as possible in the time I have. Um, we're going to cover web-based tools. We're going to cover browser tools. We're going to cover Drupal tools. We're going to cover operating system tools. And then we're going to cover uh, desktop tools. So um, a great quote from the inventor of the World Wide Web um, his name was Tim um, Berners-Lee, is the power of the web is in its universality. Access by everyone regardless of disability in, is an essential aspect. So I think that um, his quote really sums up what we're all trying to accomplish by creating equal web for all, um, which is really the, um, the whole point of making um, the web accessible. I think so people, many people focus on the legal aspect, but really it's just about making it so that everybody can access your website and, and get the information that they need. So um, I'd like to go over what our goals are. Um, so hopefully by the end of the session you'll be able to download and install the Alley tools. I've provided a link to these tools, uh, the slide, on my session page. Um, I did notice that it didn't take initially, so I'm going to talk to the folks out there after I'm done and make sure that it's on there. And I will also tweet um, with a link to the uh, slides as well. Um, number two, use Alley tools for evaluation. So we'll quickly go over how to use each tool during the four to five minute session. It might be a little longer. And create a new path for uh, applying needed fixes to your sites using these results. Um, that you can take this information back home with you and you can make your sites more accessible. So let's get started. Um, before we get started though, does anybody have any quick questions or are we good? No? Cool. Okay, so we're going to first go over some web-based tools. Um, they're used exclusively online obviously because they're web-based tools, but they're best to be bookmarked um, to your browser so that you can easily access them. Um, Great companies like the Passiello Group, uh, DeQ, and WebAIM are always creating new open source tools, so it's really important to keep your eyes open because there's always new ones coming up. Most of the tools that I use on a daily basis are, are plugins. Um, I use Chrome 
the Chrome browser for my daily uh, development. Um, so let me just discuss first of all the web-based tools since we're on that anyway. Um, on my in my normal day, I use the uh, the uh, contrast ratio web aim. Well, the web aim color contrast or link, yeah, a simulator, I think. Um, I also use just a color contrast checker um, that's a, a plug-in. Um, I use the HTML code sniffer. Um, and that's about it. Um, some of the other ones are ones that I have installed, but I don't really use them too much. Oh, the text spacing bookmarklet is one that's really new that I used for a project. Um, uh, for a ticket, actually, for one of the themes that I'm going to talk about. Um, it's really a simple bar bookmarklet that you install, and then it'll change the text spacing to the WCAG recommendation so you can see if the site breaks. But hopefully I'll show you that soon. Um, huh. Well, I'm going to just kind of go through, and then once we hopefully get access, I'll be able to click through to some of these. So, um, so it's, these are some other tools. These are some the browser tools I was talking about. Color blinding is a great tool. Um, it is a uh, tool that will show you what it's like to be colorblind in different forms. So there's several different kinds of color, ways to be colorblind, different forms. There's obviously the grayscale. Um, there's the most popular, which I think is red and green. Um, but there's about five or six different kinds. And so if you want to test um, when it comes to color contrast on your website and whether it's going to look okay, you could get the color blinding uh, tool and then you can check it um, using that. Colorzilla is a tool that uses a, um, has several different features, but the one I use it for is when I have a, like a, let's say you have a banner photo with text in front of it and I need to get the uh, color contrast between from the photo, the lightest part of the photo, and the text in front of it, um, I will take the color picker and I'll go to the photo and get that color, and then I'll go to that webbing color contrast tool, and then I'll get the text color, and I'll use look at the color contrast between the photo and the, and the text. Okay, so we're back. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and just click through these uh, tools. Um, so the first one's called Accessible Colors. Um, like I said, these slides will be available later, so you'll be able to click through to each one of these. So this one is a, a, one of the first web-based tools we'll go over. Um, you could see that when you go to the site, it already has it and shows you this pass-fail. It gives you a recommendation right here. Of this change the background of this for it to pass. So if I just do that, just to show you how it works, and I take it here and I put that in there, you can see that that just passes. So um, one of the things I was mentioning was the, uh, the font. If a uh, font is over 18.66 and bold, it can be 3.1 uh, color contrast. But if it's below that, if it's below 18.66 and uh, regular font size, it needs to be 4.5 color contrast. So I just wanted to let you know that. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. Uh, the next one is the, the A checker. Um, so let me get back to what I was doing here. So um, the A checker is a signal uh, checks a single HTML page for accessibility conformance. So the pros of this is you can enter a, a single a page, an HTML file upload, um, or you can uh, paste copy and paste some HTML markup. Um, and also, I've heard it's widely used in Canada. So uh, some of the cons, obviously, is you can only test one page at a time, and the old kind of old school look of it really. So, 
Um, another one is a color palette contrast checker. So this one here, um, when I go to the page, it already has these on here. Um, and you can see that it has these down here. So this would be good if you have a color palette and you have about five different colors or something and you wanted to put them all in here and see if they're all accessible with each other and how they work. You can also see that um, it gives you the option to um, enter text and, and into it so you can see the text in, in the, in the uh, sample and see if it passes as well. So um, it has RGBA, it has hex. I could take the text out if I wanted to or add it back in. And here is where you would add the colors, right here. Okay. The next one is contrast ratio. Um, this one is kind of interesting. Um, it's uh, you can it says HL, HSLA, but you can also enter hex. Um, if you swap click here, you can swap the colors so you can see the the difference. Um, here, obviously, it says white and has that, but you could put hex here, you put white here, whatever, um, and see the color contrast ratio right here, and you can see that it passes. Obviously, with the um, with the green, if I put um, You can obviously see it change to a fail right away. So this is a really simple one. Um, obviously, some of the cons of this one is it, you can see that it doesn't have any kind of slider to make you know go between a pass and a fail very easily. It doesn't have very much information. So um, some people like the simplicity of it, I guess. Okay, the next one is um, called HTML Code Sniffer. Um, I am going to go on Domino's site since they wanted to not be accessible and I'm going to run it. So it's a bookmarklet. Um, I'm actually going to click on this first so you can see how to do it. So this is their site right here. Um, what you would do is you would take, you would click on this right here and then you would drag it up to your books, bookmarks bar and then in, you can see I did that already and it's right there. So once you do that you click on it and you can run it on any web page and it'll give you the errors, the warnings, and notices. Um, there are no errors, so that's why it's off right here. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Domino's site and run it. And if there's more errors, it takes a little longer. <laughs> I did this earlier, and I don't think it ever came up, so... Yeah, might have to go somewhere else. Yahoo is another one. So um, you can see it has errors, warnings, and notices. So if I just wanted to look at the errors first, I could go like that um, and look at them. So I'll go here, click on this, and you can see the. it's really small. Can everybody see that okay? Yeah, okay. So it just has the error right here. Has the, um, the success criteria, you can click through to the WCAG's link right there. Um, has the suggested techniques from them, and then it has the actual code snippet. Um, you can see right here it has something that looks like the map link um, that everybody knows, the, um, the icon. Um, if it's something that's not in code, it'll actually show you where it is located on the page. So this is that, obviously the image element here has no alt text. So, and you can go through your whole page like that. Okay, so next one, JavaScript bookmarklets. So this is just a list, a web page list of tools. Um, so the pros are it has tons of tools, and you use it the same way that I used the. Um, this bookmarklet where you drag it up here. So that's kind of the con is that you have to add all of these. But they're really cool because you can then uh, scan your site for all of those kinds of issues, um, you know, including area and images and forms and headings and all of those. So um, here it says you have a demo page. So I'll just click through and um, let's see. Let me try it out. <coughs> 
so I guess that would be how it would look. Kind of old school schooly, you know. Reminds me of my childhood, but uh, that's about that, so um, delete that. Um, the next one is the test spacing one, is the one I mentioned earlier. So um, I already have this installed, but you again would take this and drag it to your bookmarks bar. Um, so if I click it, you see how it um, changed the text sizing on the page? I'm going to click it, I'm going to refresh it. So the, the text right here is, is normal, but when I click it, it applies the text spacing rules that WCAG expects when it comes to line spacing, word spacing, um, and, and all of those four things for 1.4 or 0.12 um, to the page. So if you go to dominoes and I do that, you can see that the number overlaps the text and if I scroll down, most, most things are okay on the page. But um, that's something that you could do on your site. Like you can see this gets cut off. So uh, everything should work on your site with that kind of sizing. Uh, the next one would be WebAIM's Color Contrast Simulator. This is one that I use all of the time. Um, it's just great for a lot of reasons. So right here you have the blue and you have the white and it works. So again, I'm going to go ahead and just put in this because I know that that's not going to work, 1.6. And what's great about this is, I'm just going to show you this right here, normal text, large text. So you can see what it looks like. You can see what it looks like in a form field. This is the explanation I was talking about earlier with the 3.1 or the 3.1 and the 4.5. So that's good to keep track of right there. So if I want to do this as a web developer and I'm trying to find a darker color and that hue, I just can click on this right here and then just take my arrow button and keep clicking over until I get a pass on everything and you can see I, I finally got one so that's the value I need to use right there and that is a huge benefit when you're dealing with trying to get a, an alternative color that meets color contrast so having these sliders here are, is just amazing and a lot of those tools you've seen don't have that feature so that's why this this is a really a cool tool you can see it has a permalink um, and just a bunch of cool things so I definitely recommend this tool um, to everybody. Um, that same group, WebAIM, has another one. This is a link contrast checker, so it's similar to the other one. But in addition to doing that kind of stuff, it also checks um, when it comes to like the underline and all of that kind of stuff as well. So the link color, the body text color, and the background color. So that's all of the web-based tools. Let's see. Okay, so I'm going to try to go through these a little faster since we're kind of delayed on time now. Um, the browser tools are available add-ons on your browsers. Um, some of these tools are plugins um, and extensions and other ones can be incorporated um, in your browsers of developer tools. Okay, so color blinding is the one I was talking about. You go here. I don't know why I'm on there. So you can download it right, right here from Chrome. I have an install right here. Let me go here. So if I go um, red lines right here, you can see how the colors change on the photos. So I'm going to just click through them. So it's a uh, it's a good tool to use when you're trying to go through and see if uh, the color contrast on your site is, is okay. Um, the next one is Colorzilla. So I'll go back here. So Colorzilla is this one I was talking about where you want to get the background color from the photo. So I click on here and you can see it's me trying to find the background. Uh, what I'm trying to do is find the lightest color in the photo. This one I already know is going to fail because it's white. Um, you can see it's like a light gray right there. And so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to go back into WebAIM. And you can tell I use it a lot because it's already in my saved thing. So I'm just going to go here.
and you can see it doesn't meet color contrast. So um, what I would recommend to this client is, um, you know, putting some kind of like uh, transparent something behind the text, or you know, what, you know, the different kinds of things they can do, or darkening the, the photo, or doing something like that. Stroking the text like the red price was stroked, does that help out at all? You mean putting it on the outside? Yeah. No, um, it helps a little bit, but it's still difficult to, um, it doesn't help with the color contrast with the white background. So, um, it, I think you used to be able to kind of get away with it with 2.0, but 2.1 is a little bit more strict on it. They actually have a specific uh, standard for images and graphics and stuff that covers that stuff more. So um, so the contrast ratio checker, um, this is right here. So this I can use to click on any part of the page and it will pull up the text right here. Can you see it okay? Is it small? Okay. So it has the uh, level right here, it has the ratio, and it has the foreground and the background color. So I can keep going throughout the page and just keep clicking things and seeing how the color contrast is on the page. One thing about it though is when you click on like buttons, um, you'll see that it, it'll actually activate the button once I click on it. So that's kind of a pain in the butt <laughs> um, part of that tool. So, Contrast. Okay, so high contrast is this tool right here. I'm going to enable it. So people do use the high contrast so that they can, if they have difficult seeing with the really bright colors, they'll use this. But you can use this to see what it's like. When, again, when you're having colors that are too close, for instance, if you have like a really light gray text against like a, a gray background or something you're going to see very quickly that it doesn't go well. Those two colors don't go well with this. So I can use this to test and see that the colors go well together and, and somebody that has color um, issues, visual issues, are, is going to be able to see things okay. Okay, magnifying glass is another tool. Um, it's right here. It's just for, for people that are have really hard time seeing things, reading things and stuff, they're able to just go on a page and magnify <coughs> what's on any section of the page as they're reading. So, pretty simple there. Uh, font finder and what font. So, font, font finder, I believe is this, nope. So this is uh, one where you can click on it and then go on this part of the page and it's going to give you a bunch of details about the font. So the color, uh, you know, the hex RGBA, the background color, all of that. So the color, the font, the spacing, the font weight and all of that. And so this is helpful when you're talking about text spacing, when you're looking at your code and you're trying to make sure that the code matches with what it should match with. Um, something. So. Is this one here? So I'm going to go over here actually. So this one's pretty simple. It just tells you what kind of font it is that is getting rendered. This is great when you're messing with the fonts on your site and you're not sure if it's actually showing up properly. So you can make sure that the font is actually showing up exactly how it should when you're messing with the CSS right here. And you can do that anywhere on the page as well. So, okay, so next we're going to go to these accessibility checkers. So accessibility insights, um, I have that one. I will 
Zeitungs. Okay, so it has a fast pass and an assessment. So if I just do the fast pass, it runs an automated test on the on the page. I believe this from DeQ as well, and it'll give you some basics, um, not basics, a detailed uh, list of issues on the page, and it'll also give you fixes. So um, this is a really, really great tool. Um, I really recommend it. Um, as you can see, it, uh, it's pretty cool. So. Not sure why um, it keeps going away from the page, but apps is um, some, something I'm sure a lot of you are used to. Um, that one is launched from the developer tools. So once it's installed, you can just analyze the page, and you can see the results right here. So you see violations about 22. You could change it to needs review and all of those, but once you click on this, um, I can highlight it and it'll show me on the page where the issue is. Um, it'll have the issue description, the element location, the source code, and a suggested fix right here. And you can see it's 1 of 22, so I can click through and see what all of those issues are. So these are all color contrast issues on this page. You get, um, what I was talking about earlier with the gray on gray, this is the gray on gray issue I was talking about. Uh, Site Improve has a tool. Let's see. So if I close this out, it pulls on the side. It's similar to that one. Um, you can see that it shows again all of the issues on the page. You click through. It'll show that you can open the dev tools to see the, the code snippet. It'll again show the code. It'll show the issue and it'll show you a fix with linking to WCAG. There's that. And the Pass Yellow group has the ARC toolkit. So this is one I just installed actually. I didn't know about it before, but so if you run the test, it pulls all of these different um, issues in and I'm going to go to one, let's see, tab index, tab order, oh goodness, remember where we were talking about tab order, see that? That's what I'm talking about. When you set tab order, that's what somebody experiences when they have to deal with it. So don't ever do it. <laughs> Not a good idea. So um, it's a good visualization. So it starts with sign in and then tabs all the way over the room. Mm -hmm. It starts with top left. And then one, no, it starts with zero with sign in. And oh, oh, it's I, oh, I nine. Oh, is it nine? Yeah, it's, it goes over here, 16, 17, 18 over here, and then it goes down to here, right here. So this 51, it it's, it's count, they set it. Oh. They set it, so 51, and then it goes all the way back over here, and then goes over here. So that's why you don't set tab order. So, um, Okay, um, the WAVE accessibility extension. Um, I don't think I have this one added, but it's just, uh, let me click on this here. So once you add it to a site, I think a lot of people know WAVE. Um, you just add it and it just highlights things on your page um, that are accessibility issues. It's, it's really widely used, so I would definitely use it because it's by WebAIM again, WebAIM. Um, and they're a really top uh, group of people, so um, it's it's pretty cool tool. Um, web developer. Let's see. 
going to clear this out. So web developer is just a drop down. Uh, what time is it? Yeah, okay. So web developer is a drop down um, with links and you can see that you're able to do a bunch of different things. These are all tabbed right here so you can just countless things. So um, I'm going to outline all images, um, make images invisible. Um, I mean I could just do a lot of things, um, display all attributes disable images. I mean, I could just go through this whole thing. Forms, I can... Um, is that what somebody might do, is make their images invisible and hope so they can read it better? They could, but this is really for you so that you can, um, like one would be um, the, focus, the focus state. If you wanted to see if the focus state is set properly, if I can get to it. Outline headings, make sure the headings are set properly. Um, anyway, it's on here somewhere, but yeah, so that's that's what you'd want to use it for, is those kinds of things. Um, web Disability Simulator, so I'm going to refresh this. So the next one would be this one here. So what you can do on this one is it gives you different simulations of disabilities. Uh, one of them would be sight, another one would be mobility, another would be read and write, and another is concentration. Um, so we already went through the sight um, when it comes to colorblindness, but you could also do farsightedness, tunnel vision, and sunshine as well. So I'll just do tunnel vision, which I would not want. Um, mobility, Parkinson's. So I'm, you can see I'm moving the mouse. It's one of the reasons why you need to make buttons and links and stuff bigger and not really, really small because of how hard it is for somebody that has Parkinson's or has any kind of tremors in their hands to be able to click things. But the hard part about that one is uh, getting over back over to stop that. Um, reading and writing to so dyslexia. Let's see. Small vocabulary. So these are cognitive disabilities, obviously. Um, and then concentration. Which this is actually kind of funny, but <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this <laughs> all the time. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, so, anyway, uh, yeah, so that's, that's a good one for uh, kind of understanding some of those, so. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and go through to the um, other ones, so, let's see. So, getting started with uh, viewing and changing CSS, um, I just wanted to quickly show you on Google Tools for Web Developers that obviously when you go to the developer's tools on uh, here, I'm sure uh, a lot of you guys know this, but if you go down here, and I'm on dark mode, which is why it's dark, just so that you know that. Um, if you click on this, you can look at this page as if it's a, um, a different device, a responsive. I can look at it like it's an iPhone X. I can look at it like it's an iPad. I can change the orientation. Those things are actually part of accessibility. Mobile devices are part of accessibility, so you do need to check that. Um, let's see. Another thing um, is within CSS, you can actually check the colors. Let me see if I can do this. kind of getting close on, I'm really tight on time now because everything, so click on accessibility. You can say a lot of different things there, so I'm going to skip through here. Um, mobile simulation. Oh, 
I'm going to do that. <coughs> so um, here, let's see, audits. They have the lighthouse <coughs> on it. So you can run it in mobile or desktop. You can uncheck these and just do accessibility. And this, this is in Chrome, so you don't have to add anything. I don't think so. And then you can just run an audit. And it'll give you the results there. So there's just tons and tons of different tools, as you can see. developer tools. There's Firefox Accessibility Inspector. Um, so I'm just going to click through to the tool. Um, if you uh, turn it on, you, this is what it looks like here. Uh, it just shows all of the different elements and it shows, um, once you scan it, you can see the different checks and it shows you the issues and, and it might show you how to fix it. Um, the Page Inspector. This is a responsive design mode, sorry. Um, so by using these tools, you can do the same thing that you did in Chrome and Firefox. So, okay. Um, I'm really late on time now. So do you guys want to still stay? Are you guys okay? Okay. Uh, browser stack is just a tool that you go online and you can um, test a bunch of different devices, a bunch of different browsers, a bunch of different operating systems. It's a paid service though, so I'm not going to even go there because I don't have it. Um, so Drupal tools, I'm going to get to that now. Um, let's see, escape. So I have an Umami site here. Let me go through responsive images. Um, So responsive image styles, everybody knows image styles if they've worked with Drupal before, but responsive image styles uses a breakpoint. So it'll take like, um, let's say you upload an image this size, and then you take different breakpoints and you set it. So for a mobile site, it used to be that that same image that was huge would load for a small mobile device, and it would be huge and it would take forever to load. But responsive image makes it so that when it gets to this, it's a small image instead of being this huge image. So that's a great accessibility advantage and so this is a really great uh, module. It has a little bit of a learning curve once you're trying to figure out the breakpoints and all of that kind of stuff but once you figure it out it's really great so that's what this one is all about. Uh, text editor and WYSIWYG so how is that good for accessibility? Um, let's see. So um, I put the pros on it is, uh, let's see here. if you go here and here, one of the good things about the um, text editors is you can limit what is entered. So you can make a text editor for your content editors that's really, really simple. So even though these are the ones here, you could even make it, make it even more minimal. Um, and that's a really cool thing. And you can see these things, you can limit the different tags and you can limit, so you can add those here. And I think you can even add a CSS classes to that and everything. Um, one of the bad things about the WYSIWYG obviously is that um, structured to me, structured content is really important. So whenever you have a, a, a WYSIWYG or a text editor, you're allowing that blog content to be entered. So you gotta be really, really careful with how you um, add it to your site um, and what you allow into it, so. But it's cool that you can limit it, limit what's in it. Um, the next one is views. So if I go to the homepage of this Umami site, which is a re recipe site, and I right click right here, get out of this. Um, you can see right here for this, it says view recipe. 
Um, this is a view, actually. So, and right here it says read more. And what would happen for a screen reader is they would go and they can see a list of links. And this would say view recipe, view recipe, view recipe over and over again, um, which obviously is not helpful for them. But because this in uh, views is set like this, where it has visually hidden, and then it has fiery chili sauce, and then the next one it has the name of the recipe. What they're going to see is view recipe, fiery chili sauce, and then view recipe, and then the next name. So that's helpful for them, but for us, we just see view recipe because we really don't need to see that. So that's how views can be used for accessibility. And you can do that for any view or block or whatever, or for any page or block in views. So it's really great. And that's just one example. Another one would be headings. You can add headings at different levels in, in a, a view or a block that you need to add. So another one is the Claro admin theme. Um, this is a quick YouTube video. The main goal of this project was to refresh the look and feel of the administrative UI so that Drupal will be perceived as a more modern platform. I'm going to start with the plain installation of the Umami demo installation profile. Here you can see how Drupal looks in its current state. We've heard lots of feedback that the current Drupal administrative UI looks underwhelming. This is for the most part due to the fact that this was designed 10 years ago, back in 2009, and it has only received some minor updates since then. Next, let's enable Bob, our new upcoming administration team, and take a look at how much better things will be. So the first thing you will notice is that Bob uses much cooler color palette with more contrast. It looks more modern and is easier to use for people with visual impairments. In this project, we've decided to mainly focus on the visual look at the object, as well as accessibility. We are making only a limited number of functional changes. We've redesigned and implemented all of the components for basic set configuration and altering content on the site. We've done user testing on the designs, and the feedback has been overwhelmingly positive. It makes a big difference to content creators and site builders who spend hours a day working in the new site. The team has also focused on ensuring that the new team works well on all types of devices. We have automated tooling to help us test cross-browser compatibility and responsive view models. We've also increased the size of site controls such as buttons and fields to ensure that they are easy to use on mobile. Power is also designed and built to support Windows icons just more out of the box. This is a type of assistive technology designed to help users with visual impairment. Here you can see how Clara looks like when viewed on Windows high contrast mode. Next, let's take a look at some of the accessibility improvements we've made. First, I'm going to navigate using a keyboard. This is often used by users with modern disabilities or visual impairment. We've ensured that there are always strong indicators for what the user is currently focusing on the page. We've also ensured that the focus is only indicated with color to make sure that users with color blindness can recognize the focus effect. Okay. So, close that up. So that's the Clara admin theme uh, that they're working on right now, and that's going to hopefully be either, either an add-on or a replacement for 7. I'm not really sure which one, but it's a great thing. So. And the other one is the Olivero theme. Let me take this tool off here. I'm trying to tell what font that is. So this is a uh, proof of concept. This was just announced at um, Amsterdam, at Drupalcon Am Amsterdam. Um, and I'm helping out with the accessibility on this one. So this is going to be a replacement for Bartik. And it is, uh, accessibility was a big part of this one as well. So you can see that if I um, tab through, Everything is keyboard accessible. Um, you can see that if I hover and or if I tab, everything is handled with color and with outlines. And it's very uh, clean and has white space, but you know, all of that. And of course, it's accessible, uh, responsive, I mean. So, who's trying? that up. Okay, so that's that. 
Um, some other uh, Drupal tools, block area landmark rules. Um, so if I go into the blocks UI, and I'll look at the language switcher here. By adding um, block area landmark rules, um, it gives you the option right here, adding a landmark rule to a block. Um, which makes the block accessible. So you can add application, banner, complementary, content info. So if you have, for instance, a footer block and it needs to be in there, that would be content info, um, or a form, or a search, navigation, main, any one of those. That's really important. Uh, one thing to remember is that if you are use, you know, writing HTML5 on your site, you don't want to add um, landmark rules because that's redundant because if you have, for instance, main, you don't need to add main because main already says it's main. So the other thing um, is here, you can add an area label to the block. So that's really helpful if you want, we were talking about earlier, uh, read more and then having the title, you could add that to the label right here. And that's pretty cool. Um, CK Editor Accessibility Checker, uh, I'm gonna link to it because I couldn't get it to work on my test site. So this is actually going to eventually be in core when they get it fixed. Um, it was using Quill.js, which is the issue. They're working on getting it to use Axe. Uh, once it does, it's going to have this little button here within the WYSIWYG. And I've used it before and it's pretty cool where once you do click that button, it goes through your content and it gives you the issue and it allows you to fix it. You can also do a quick fix where it'll fix it for you. So, so um, if you want to help out with that uh, project, I'm sure they'd appreciate it. Um, contact and contact storage. Um, the reason I have this on the list is because um, I tested it and contact storage and contact, the contact form is an accessible form. So I would highly recommend if you have simple forms on your site, using it because it's a fully accessible form. So, uh, path bottom, um, that's just where you have the URL aliases. That's actually a big part of accessibility um, just because the paths to the uh, site, it's really important that they're simple and don't have a bunch of numbers and are difficult to read and follow for people with cognitive disabilities. So, This would be an example of that right here. Um, and style guide is a really important one. So if I go to the um, theme and I go to the style guide right here, um, this is the style guide for the entire um, umami theme right here. So it has every single element that is themed for this. So the cool thing about this is that I can then take HTML code sniffer for instance, and I can run it on this entire page, and it's going to give me every accessibility issue with this entire theme, and then I can run it and fix all of the things on the theme on one page, and that is really, really important. So I really, really like the style guide theme for that reason. It's really cool. Um, okay, um, I'm going to quickly run through these. OS tools, you have um, voiceover. Um, has anybody not heard voiceover? Just yep, okay. You have Windows tools, uh, screen reader is a narrator. Desktop tools, you have uh, Microsoft Office has an accessibility checker. So each one of the Office tools has an accessibility checker. Google Docs has some steps to check and you can also add alt text to the images. Um, Acrobat PDF accessibility checker is another tool. The JAWS screen reader is a paid software, NVDA is Windows based, and Orca is Linux. Um, Pete is a, che is a checker for seizures actually, so it'll tell you if something um, is going to cause seizures. Um, the Pass Yellow Group's color contrast analyzer works for Mac and Windows, it's pretty cool. And the, the web accessibility toolbar um, works for Windows only. And that's it, <laughs> finally. Done. So, any questions? How do you 
I mean, so if you're given a design, is that the first thing you sort of run through is like contrast things? And then, I mean, yeah. is that something we should start expecting designers to be aware of? For yeah. Individual design? Should we start promoting that? Yeah. I, works? I feel like, mm -hmm. yes, I want to make my site accessible. I don't know if my client necessarily cares about accessibility or what that means for them, especially with this dollar space, but at the same time, that, that audit that you would do of a design sounds like it would be quite a significant amount of work. So like, mm -hmm. what is the balance of all in being an accessibility like, advocate? Mm -hmm. It sounds like you take that very seriously and take your time with that. So I mean, is that something we should, as developers, always all be doing? Mm -hmm. I always start with the design because it's the easiest way to do it as opposed to waiting until you're in development. Yeah. Um, so we'll get the design and one of the things I really like to get is the style guide. Um, even if it's just a PDF or something, but I prefer to get like a Photoshop file or a PNG or whatever so I can pull that in. Um, and and it, especially if they have hex values on it so I can yes. test it, you know. Um, but if you test it then, then that's actually going to end up educating the designers so that when they start doing stuff, they're going to know, oh, I need to check for color contrast, and I need to check for this or that. So that's actually what I've seen happen when it comes to checking in the design process initially. Um, when it comes to uh, uh, companies, you know, you're going to get some companies that don't care. It's really important to educate them no matter what, um, especially um, private companies to let them know that although the... Um, the federal laws and all of those don't cover them. ADA does help cover them, and that's why companies like Domino's and private companies have gotten sued and lost. Yeah. It's because of ADA, which covers them, and so they need. To, it, it's just our, our job to inform them that they can get sued and let them know that, and just kind of CYA on our side yeah. and educate them. And if they choose not to do it, then that's that's their choice, unfortunately. But we can do what we can, even on if they choose not to do that, on the development side of developing with accessibility in mind. And if they choose, for instance, they don't want underlying links in some place, or they don't want any kind of uh, color differentiator Focus. like they need to have, and things like that, then that's that's going to be on them. Right. So that's, that's what I would say. Gotcha. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? No? OK, good. Thank you. Thank you.